Joshua chapter 4. In Joshua chapter 4 and verse 1 it says, And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua. So they were clean passed over. That just means that they made it all the way over. They were clean passed over. But I just look at that phrase and it just pops out at me. You think about clean passed over. That's just like me and you. The moment we got saved, we're clean and we passed over. He translated us from darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. He's raised us up together to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We got clean and passed over. Now, on my daily walk, I'm still getting clean. Still trying to stay clean. 1 John 1, 9 says if, we're, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Every time I, I go to the Lord in prayer and I say, God, I'm sorry I shouldn't have done that. I want to do better today. I get clean, passed over. Or in, you think about Ephesians 5, 25 through 26 it says husbands love your wives even as christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word so i get clean passed over by the washing of water by the word and second corinthians 7 1 once again it's talking about my walk my daily walk it says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So I'm, I got clean and passed over when I got saved. And now every day I'm trying to die daily, reckon my flesh to be dead. It's trying to stay clean and pass over. They're clean and passed over. So it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over Jordan that the Lord spake unto Joshua. Now, a lot of times you read something like that and you think, I, I wish the Lord could speak directly to me just like he did Joshua. Well, the thing is, you got more uh, word of God than Joshua has. I, I doubt that, jo uh, that the Lord spoke 66 books worth of words to Joshua. I'd say that you got more of God talking to you than Joshua had. And you can carry it around with you in your pocket. But he says, take you 12 men out of the people, out of every tribe, a man. So it takes a man. It's going to take a man to carry this load. And 1 Peter 3, 4, it says... But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great price. This is talking about the woman here. But it says to her, let it be the hidden man of the heart. See, you got the man, Christ Jesus, living in you. Even though you're a woman, if you're saved, you've got the hidden man of the heart. And you got the man Christ Jesus living in you. And it takes a man to carry the load. It's going to take the Lord Jesus. And it says in Joshua 4.2, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe of man. So out of every tribe, Joshua's going to get a man from each tribe. And command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, Twelve stones, and you shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where you shall lodge this night. So, the stones are going to be carried about six or seven miles. Most likely, he's going to get a strong man from each tribe to carry these stones about six or seven miles. So, these had to be not just strong men, but men of great courage. And they also had to go back in the Jordan. They had already clean passed over Jordan. So remember, they're going to have to go back into the Jordan and get the stones. And notice he didn't tell them where they were going to lodge. 
They're going to walk by faith in doing this. They're going to carry the stone to the lodging place. And you think, once again, think back again about salvation. You're carrying the stone to your lodging place. Uh, you think about the stone. Jesus Christ is the stone of stumbling, the rock of offense. And you carry it to your lodging place. The first thing you ought to do is take the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to your lodging place, to your home. And then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared to the children of Israel out of every tribe of man. Verse 5, And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. So they're going back in the Jordan, and they're going to take a stone, they're going to put it on their shoulder. It's like carrying your cross. When you are clean passed over, you got saved, you got washed in the blood, you're clean and passed over, you're already sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, but you need to have something on your shoulder. You're carrying your cross. You're, you're holding your weight. Not to get saved or stay saved, but because you want to be a, a soldier. And then in verse 6, it says that this may be a sign among you. See that? That this shall be a sign. That when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? See, you want to leave the things of God laying around so your kids are going to ask questions about it. You know, kids ask, all, that's all they want to do is ask questions. They ask questions about everything. So if you leave things around that the kids are going to ask questions about and those things that you're leaving around is a way to talk about God, that's what you're going to end up talking about. Like you want to leave Bibles laying around everywhere. When you're playing a song in the car, let it be a godly song so they can ask questions about that. You know, when you, when you get older and die and they come to your house and clean it out and clean out your building, there ought to be a whole bunch, tons of notes and things that's going to remind them of God. And when they come into your room, let it just be, be full of Bible stuff to be a sign and a reminder of the Lord Jesus Christ. This, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. So he wanted even the children of time to come to know about this great miracle, the passing over Jordan, and the miracle that God did there. See, you, you don't want to forget all the miracles God's done in your life. You want to maybe even get you a journal. Maybe write it down somewhere in your Bible. God did this for me. God answered this prayer. And then your the kids that's not even born yet, your grandkids, your great-grandkids, they're going to open that and they're going to read it and they're going to see it and they're going to know about the power of God in your life. And the children of Israel did as Joshua commanded and took up twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan as the Lord spake unto Joshua according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged and laid them down there. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan, and the place where the feet of the priests which bear the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they are there unto this day. So Joshua also went back into the Jordan and set up twelve stones in Jordan. See, he's not asking you to do something that he's not willing to do. And you think about the Lord Jesus Christ and you think, well, we got this, not us. We don't think this way. But a lot of people, they think, well, this God's just up 
up in heaven and he's telling us to do all this stuff and it's not fair and he's mean and all this, he's not telling you to do anything that he's not willing to do. He came down in the flesh, in the likeness of sinful flesh, but never sinned one time and lived for God his whole life, 33 years, and then laid down his life for us. He's, and then he's not asking you to do anything that he wasn't willing to do. Joshua didn't ask them to do anything he wasn't willing to do. He also went back on the Jordan. And the stones that he put in the Jordan would have caused a ripple effect in the water that could be seen as a reminder to him when we passed over Jordan. And the stone can picture death. And this the whole thing pictures a, a death, burial, and resurrection. You got Joshua going into the water, picturing the death, putting the stones there, picturing the burial, and then coming up out of the water, picturing the resurrection. And Joshua himself is a type of the Lord Jesus. Joshua and Jesus' name is the same. So what you have here is a picture of a death, burial, and, and resurrection. So he goes into Jordan picturing the death, comes back up picturing the resurrection, and Jesus is the living stone. So the stones picture the Lord Jesus as well. 1 Peter 2, 4 through 7. In 1 Peter 2, 4 through 7, it says, To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up as spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling. This is verse 8 of First Peter 2. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. You know, anytime I see stone or rock in the Bible, it automatically, mostly puts me in mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think, is there a picture, some type of picture here, when I see a stone or a rock? Now, verse 10 of Joshua 4, For the priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the people according to all that Moses commanded Joshua and all the people hasted and passed over. So, look at that. The priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of Jordan until everything was finished. So they finish the job. You know, you want to finish your course. You, sh you got saved. You believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. You started this journey. And you want to finish your course. Hopefully, you want to accomplish some things with your Christian life. Hopefully, you've got a goal that you want to complete before you die and go to heaven, you see. Or before the rapture. You want to finish. They stood in there until they finished. And it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over that the ark of the Lord passed over and the priests in the presence of the people and the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the children of Israel as Moses spake unto them. So you got the two and a half tribes of Manasseh, Reuben, and Gad, they're going over armed. They're the ones that they had their possession on the wrong side of Jordan, but they're going to go over Jordan with them to help them get possession of their land. You see, you see and they're going over armed. So you need to go through this Christian life armed. How do you arm yourself? 
Well, like right now, I got my Bible with me. I'm going to bring it to work with me. I've got a Bible in my f work room, my freezer room, where I catch ice cream. I got a Bible in there. I got a Bible in my locker. I got a Bible in my freezer jacket. I've got a Bible in my car. I got a Bible in my bathroom, in my living room. Tons of them in my bedroom. And I'm just armed. I got them just hidden places, so I just got it. Wherever I'm at, I can pull it out. I got Bible apps. I've got all kinds of stuff. So I can pass over armed. And that's what they're going to do. They're passing over armed. And you think about this in verse 11. It says, And it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over that the ark of the Lord passed over. The ark was the first thing in and the last thing out. Joshua 3.11. Look at Joshua 3.11. In Joshua 3.11, it says, Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into the Jordan. It was the first thing in and the first thing out. The ark pictures the Lord Jesus Christ, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12, 2. Now, verse 13. About 40,000 prepared for war passed over before the Lord unto battle to the plains of Jericho. This is a whole bunch of people here. It's hard for me to even get a picture of this in my head because it's it's so many people. That's just the ones prepared for war there. This There's a couple million children of Israel going through this thing. Now verse 14, On that day the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel. And they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. Now that phrase in there, on that day, the Lord magnified Joshua, really puts me of mind of, you know, the phrase, in that day. And, you know, in that day, that phrase, it goes along with the tribulation and the second coming. And at the second coming, when Jesus Christ brings in his kingdom, he's going to be magnified. And Joshua, same name as Jesus, on that day, the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel. When Jesus Christ comes back at the second coming, they're going to look on him whom they've pierced, and they're going to know this is the Messiah. This is really him. This is God Almighty. And the Lord spake unto Joshua. Well, let's look at this. And they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. So just like they feared Moses... Joshua is his successor, and they fear him. And he has no scandals all the days of his life. He keeps their respect all the days of his life. And the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Command the priests that bear, bear the ark of the testimony that they come up out of Jordan. Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come ye up out of Jordan. See, the chain of command God tells Joshua what to do, and then Joshua tells the people what to do, and they do it. It's like getting people to do what you say is such a hard thing. Uh, I mean, people that you train at work, getting them to do what you say willingly. It, the, people just don't want to do that anymore. They don't want to do what you say. They don't want to have any authority. They think, well, who are you to tell me what to do? Well, I'm having to listen to my boss tell me what to do. And then my boss has a boss. And then his boss has a boss. And then that guy's boss has a boss. You know, everywhere you go, you've got somebody in authority over you. And you have to get used to, to going by authority. And if you're young listening to this, you've got parents that God gave you. And you're supposed to do what they say. And if they're doing what they're supposed to do, they're supposed to be listening to God that tells them what to do. And if you got like a chain of command, everybody has somebody that's going to tell them what to do. 
You know, I've got policemen that would tell me what to do. You know, you've got a teacher that's going to tell you what to do, a supervisor. Everywhere you go, you're under some type of authority. And then you've got the Bible with you all the time, your final authority telling you what to do. You need to learn to take orders, just like Joshua takes orders, and then he gives orders. Once again, he's not expecting them to do something he's not willing to do because he's taking orders himself. So, verse 18, And it came to pass when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the, of the Lord were come up out of the midst of Jordan, and the sole of the priest's feet were lifted up unto the dry land, that the waters of Jordan returned unto their place and flowed over all his banks as they did before. Now think about this. When the priests were come up out of the midst of Jordan and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up unto the dry land, the waters of Jordan returned unto their place and flowed over all his banks as they did before. So once there, when the priest's feet got up out of Jordan, that, that water just rushed back down. And that's a picture of us leaving the earth and the judgment of God falling on the earth. You know, he's made us kings and priests. And the moment that our feet leave this ground and we go up in the rapture, and our vile bodies fashioned like unto his glorious body. And this uh, corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. And we're changing the moment and the, and the twinkling of an eye. Judgment's going to fall on this earth. Kind of a reminder of the rapture there. And all the, and the people came up out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month and encamped in Gilgal in the east border of Jericho. So Gilgal, six to seven miles from the Jordan, and Gilgal was like their headquarters after crossing the Jordan. You know, every everybody needs a headquarters, and this is during the Passover season. Think about that, because 1 Corinthians 5, 7 says Jesus is our Passover. So during the Passover season, they're clean passed over. And even the Passover is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 20, And these twelve stones which they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. Gilgal is the first encampment on the west side of Jordan in the promised land. And Gilgal means rolled away. And God has rolled away the reproach of Egypt by having them circumcised, as you're going to see in Joshua 5, 1 through 9. He, ha uh, he has Joshua circumcise them and at Gilgal, and Gilgal means rolled away. They rolled away the reproach of Egypt, and circumcision is a cutting, and it's a picture. The, f the physical circumcision is a picture of the f spiritual circumcision that you have today, and what God does with that spiritual circumcision is the moment you got saved, he cuts your soul loose from your flesh and he's rolling away the reproach. More about Gilgal. It first appears in Deuteronomy 11.30. In Deuteronomy 11, in verse 30, it says... Are they not on the other side Jordan by the way where the sun goeth down and the land of the Canaanites which dwell in the champaign over against Gilgal beside the plains of Mora? So that's your first appearance of Gilgal. In Gilgal, Israel celebrated its first Passover in Joshua 5, 1 through 10. And it was Joshua's base camp, as you'll see in 9, 6, 10, 6 through 7, and then 10, 15, 43, and 43, and then Joshua 14 and verse 6. 
and Gilgal is where Saul is made king. 1 Samuel eleven fifteen. Now, verse 21. And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you were passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us until we were gone over. That all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that you might fear the Lord your God forever. So these memorial stones, the purpose was to remind the children of time to come, letting them know these children that didn't get to see it, didn't get to experience it, or just won't remember it, these memorial stones, when they look at them and see them, they're going to ask the question, what mean you these stones? And it's going to open a door for them to tell them about the Lord God and what he did for them. The same thing with the Red Sea. You don't want to forget the Red Sea, which was also like a baptism. And uh, it even calls it a baptism. In 1 Corinthians, Paul says they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. It pictures a death, burial, and resurrection. And the stones at Gilgal picture resurrection. So everything's a picture. Everything means something. Even stories you think are very insignificant, they all mean something. But that's Joshua chapter 4. Next time we'll pick up in chapter 5.